Greetings, Freckle family, and welcome back to Movie Mondays. It's December 4th, and I'm your host, John Bailey, a.k.a. the Epic Voice Guy. And I'm excited to be back with you for another round of movie trivia. This week, we're incredibly excited to partner with La La and the Wolf of Wall Street film for a very special two-day trivia event. La La is creating a new fan experience where movie and TV fans can dive deeper into the stories they love and get rewarded for it. Celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Wolf of Wall Street film, La La presents Drop 002. Naomi enters the chat, a fusion of cinematic drama and vibrant digital creativity, celebrating the power of female voices in the arts. Lala has hooked us up with some incredible prizes, from merch to NFTs and even a few movie tickets. Head to lala.xyz to learn more. Now, get ready to dive into the world of Wolf of Wall Street trivia, and be sure to tune in until the end for a special surprise from Lala. What year was the Wolf of Wall Street released? Was it A, 2010, B, 2012, C, 2013, or D, 2015. The film is based on the real-life memoir of Jordan Belfort, a former stockbroker who engaged in corrupt activities on Wall Street. The movie uh, uh, received critical acclaim for its portrayal of excess and debauchery in the world of finance. Oh no, debauchery! The Wolf of Wall Street was released in C, 2013. Moving on to question number two. Who directed The Wolf of Wall Street? Was it A, foot fetish fantasy guy Quentin Tarantino, B, Martin Scorsese, C, Steven Spielberg, or D, Ridley Scott? He has directed iconic films such as Goodfellas, Taxi Driver, and a whole bunch of other Robert De Niro movies. The Departed, earning him numerous awards, including an Academy Award for Best Director. B, Martin Scorsese is the acclaimed director of The Wolf of Wall Street. He's also known for his extensive contributions to cinema. Now. Let's head to question number three, our sponsored question of the day. Check out our video from our epic sponsors. My wife, Naomi, the Duchess of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, a former model and Miller Lite girl. Epic shout out to our epic sponsors from an epic voice guy. Jordan Belfort founded which brokerage firm? A. Stratton Oakmont, B. L.F. Rothschild, C. Belfort and Porsche, or D. Oakmont Trading. The film gained notoriety for its fraudulent activities as depicted in The Wolf of Wall Street. Belfort's memoir, upon which the film is based, provides a detailed account of the extravagant and unethical practices prevalent in the financial industry during that era. Jordan Belfort founded the brokerage firm A. Stratton Oakmont. Moving on to question number four. In which New York suburb did Jordan Belfort grow up? Was it A. Manhattan, B. The Bronx, C. Brooklyn, or D. Queens? Hey, those are our places in New York over here. His rise, and fall on Wall, his rise and fall on Wall Street, chronicled in The Wolf of Wall Street, showcases the excesses of the 1980s and 1990s financial world. Belfort's life has become a cautionary tale about the consequences of unchecked greed and financial malfeasance. Jordan Belfort grew up in D.E. Queens. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. It's time to move on to the final question of the day. How many times is the F word used throughout The Wall Wolf of Wall Street? Is it A, 300 times? B, 400 times, C, 500 times, or D, 600 times. Almost as much as Deadpool says it. The Wolf of Wall Street holds the record for the most uses of the F word in a non-documentary with over C, 500 instances. The film's dialogue, often explicit and intense, contributes to its gritty portrayal of the high stakes, morally ambiguous world of stock trading in the late 20th century. And that concludes today's special Wolf of Wall Street daily trivia. Thank you so much for playing today's game, and a huge shout out to our sponsors at Lala. In addition to Lala prizes in the prize pool, everyone can use Freckle 15 for 15% 15 off the Lala merch store. But make sure you sign up for a Freckle TV account and create your user profile in order to be eligible for raffles and prizes. Tune in tomorrow as our new host, Hunter Ditch, takes on round two of Wolf of Wall Street trivia. Hey there, Freckle family. How the heck are ya? It's December 5th, and I'm Hunter the Boss Ditch, your new host for Tuesday's Daily Trivia. Tuesdays will normally be dedicated to one of my favorite themes, music. But this week, 
we're incredibly excited to partner with Lala and the Wolf of Wall Street Film for a very special two-day trivia event. Lala's creating a new fan experience where movie and TV fans can dive deeper into the stories that they love and get rewarded for it. Celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Wolf of Wall Street film, Lala presents Drop 002. Naoma, Naomi enters the chat. A fusion of cinematic drama and vibrant digital creativity celebrating the power of female voices in the arts. My wife, Naomi, the Duchess of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, a former model and Miller Lite girl. Lala has been generous enough to provide us with some incredible prizes from merch to NFTs and even a few movie tickets. Head to lala.xyz to learn more. Now, get ready to dive into the world of Wolf of Wall Street trivia and be sure to tune in until the end for a special surprise from Lala. Let's get started with question one. Who improvised the chest thumping scene in The Wolf of Wall Street? A, Leonardo DiCaprio, B, Matthew McConaughey, or C, Jonah Hill, D, Martin Scorsese? This memorable sequence where Hannah initiates a rhythmic chest beat accompanied by humming was not scripted, but an impromptu addition by the talented actor. What adds a fascinating layer is that Leonardo DiCaprio playing Jordan Belfort found himself just following along, unsure of what to do. Our answer is B, Matthew McConaughey. Moving on to question two. Which actor took a significant pay cut to work with Martin Scorsese on The Wolf of Wall Street? A, Leonardo DiCaprio, B, Jonah Hill, C, Matthew McConaughey, or D, Margot Robbie? His dedication to working with the acclaimed director showcases the allure and respect many actors have for Scorsese's cinematic expertise. B, Jonah Hill, known for his comedic roles, took a substantial pay cut to collaborate with Martin Scorsese on the film. Moving on to question three. Who lent the production his actual white Lamborghini for use in the film? A, Lambert, Leonardo DiCaprio, B, Jonah Hill, C, Martin Scorsese, or D, Jordan Belfort? The white Lamborghini driven by, Jel by Jordan Belfort in the movie was not a prop. It was D, Jordan Belfort's real car. Belfort lent his own Lamborghini to the production to add authenticity to the portrayal of his extravagant lifestyle. Moving on to question four. What injury did Leonardo DiCaprio reportedly sustain during the filming of the Quaalude scene? A, a broken arm, B, an injured back, C, a sprained ankle, or D, a concussion. His commitment to accurately portraying the effects of the drug, including physical impairment, resulted in an authentic and mem memorable performance. Leonardo DiCaprio reportedly injured his B, back, during the filming of the Quaalude scene. Moving on to the final question of the day. What nickname does Jordan Belfort give to Naomi in The Wolf of Wall Street? A, the Duchess of Bay Ridge, B, the Queen of Wall Street, C, the Princess of Long Island, or D, the Lady of Manhattan? In the movie, Jordan Belfort affectionately refers to Naomi, played by Margot Robbie, as the Duchess of Bay Ridge. His nickname adds a touch of extravagance to their tumultuous relationship in the world of high finance. And that concludes today's special Wolf of Wall Street Daily Trivia. Thank you so much for playing today's game. A huge shout out to our sponsors at Lala. In addition to Lala prizes in, 
In the prize pool, everyone can use Freckle 15 for 15% 15 off of the La La merch store. But make sure you sign up for a Freckle TV account, create your user profile in order to be eligible for raffles and prizes. Stay tuned for tomorrow's Hump Day with Leah Lamar. Well, hello, hello, Freckle family. Welcome to Hump Days with me, Leah Lamar. All right, no need for the fake excitement, but let me break it down for you. Today's trivia isn't your run-of-the-mill brain workout, it's my kind of brain workout. Spiced up with a dash of sarcasm and a sprinkle of charm. <laughs> Why bother? Well, because we're not just here to showcase our intellectual prowess, we're here for the loot, baby. Yep, we've got some sponsored prizes up for grabs, and who doesn't love winning free shit? So whether you're a trivia virtuoso or just here for the banter, stick around and let's see who walks away with the virtual glory. Oh, and for those lagging behind, get that Freckle account sorted. Don't have one? Seriously, what the are you waiting for? <laughs> the apocalypse? Because, well, actually, that's around the corner, but Hey, you're missing out on Hump Day Trivia with Leah Lamar, baby. So that's not really in your best interest. Hop to it. Now, let's start this first Hump Day off with a bang. See what I did there? <laughs> You'll come around. Let's get the day started with question number one. Who wrote The Merchant of Venice? A, William Shakespeare, B, Charles Dickens, C, Leo Tolstoy, or D, Jane Austen? Ah, the timeless allure of the theater. Everyone loves it. Just ask Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Your answer, A, William Shakespeare, authored The Merchant of Venice and an array of timeless works. His profound impact on literature is immortal, with the play themes and characters echoing through the corridors of literary history. Echo, echo, okay. Shakespeare's quill, a beacon of eloquence, continues to enchant and illuminate the stages of the world. Moving on to question number two. What is the largest continent in the world? A, Europe, B, North America, C, Asia, or D, Africa? Behold, the grandeur of our world's continents where you can find the seven wonders of the world. The eighth is whether or not this is all just a simulation. <laughs> but that's a story for a different day. The answer is C, Asia. The colossal continent unfolds a mosaic of cultures, landscapes, and histories. From the majestic Himalayas to bustling streets of Tokyo, Asia stands as a testament to the vibrant variety that flourishes across its vast expanse, inviting exploration and cultural exposition. Moving on to question number three, our sponsored question of the day. Check out this video from one of our sponsors. My wife, Naomi, the Duchess of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, a former model and Miller Lite girl. Shout out to our sponsors. All right, let's get back to the game. Next question, what is the largest bone in the human body? A, skull, B, tibia, C, femur, or D, humerus? And yes, you heard me correctly. I said humerus, not humerus. Ha ha, funny, right? There's nothing funny about it. No, seriously, like the funny bone is in your elbow. So it's like, okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> our bodies are a marvel of nature and the largest bone within them is the formidable femur. Our answer C, the femur, withstands the rigors of daily life. Fun fact, the femur's strength surpasses that of concrete, a testament to the awe-inspiring engineering embedded within the human skeletal framework. All right, moving on to question number four. What phobia means fear of spiders? A, hydrophobia, B, arachnophobia, C, claustrophobia, or D, acrophobia? Fear in its many forms can be both intriguing and mystifying. For example, what I fear the most is being happy. <laughs> but that's something my therapist and I have been trying to figure out for a while. <laughs> I'm okay. All right, your answer for right now is B, arachnophobia, the dread of spiders. Weaves its intricate web in the tapestry of human fears. Perhaps rooted in our evolutionary past, this fear of eight-legged creatures is both fascinating and widespread. Despite their ecological importance, 
Spiders trigger potent reactions illustrating the complex interplay between instinct and reason in the human psyche. Moving on to the final question for the day. Are you guys ready? Okay, this is our last question. What is the name of the first artificial satellite? A, Explorer 1, B, Vanguard 1, C, Sputnik 1, or D, Apollo 11? This Soviet marvel, and no, I'm not talking about Putin. <laughs> One that is a mere grapefruit in size, also probably the size of Putin's brain, but that's a story for a different day. This thing not only encircled the Earth, but ignited the space race, emitting radio signals C. Sputnik 1 echoed across the globe, heralding humanity's journey beyond our planet. Woo. That felt fun. I'm so sorry. A beacon of exploration, it fueled dreams, inspired innovation, and helped Putin, get it? Okay, forever etched the society's union's name in the annals of space exploration. See, like if Putin it in there? Okay, and that's a wrap, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for tuning in, and a huge shout out to all our sponsors of the week. Lala! Make sure you're fully signed up for a Freckle TV account to be eligible for the goodie room. And that's what I call my, oh, I'm not allowed to say that? Okay, then, um, yeah, it's the prize market. Womp womp. Just a reminder that you can use the code FRECKLE15 to get 15% off Lala merch right now. I'll be back next Wednesday, but tomorrow, Juliano Hodges is back for a round of Freckle Elementary. Wednesday, 12-1, moon. Oh. <laughs> yes, everyone does it. I woke up like 30 minutes ago, dude. Hello, 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 Freckle family. How the fudge are you guys doing? It's Thursday, December 7th. And I am your trivia host, Juliano Hodges. As you can see, I'm so stoked to be here. And today is the first day of Freckle Elementary. That's right, we're taking you fools back to grade school with trivia, the fact that you've definitely learned, uh, with facts that you definitely learned, but most likely forgot. So, let's go hard. <laughs> For all these lovely new players out there, welcome. Uh, our daily trivia is the only game where you can answer questions every weekday to win dope prizes from Funkos, collectibles, to NFTs and gaming computers. All you have to do is play every day, answer five questions and no raffle tickets, and head to the prize marketplace, and there's some great stuff in there, and there's some new prizes, so always getting added, so pull up and don't miss out. My lips are dry. Speaking of prizes, before we get started, let's give a quick shout out to Lala and the Wolf of the Wall Street movie for these dope prizes. Sadly, we couldn't add Quaaludes to the prize pool. So all you nasties out there, sorry, nerds. All right, let's get started with question number one. Which element on the periodic table is represented by the letter N? Is that A, neon, B, nitrogen, C, nickel, or D, sodium? Being represented by the letter N on the periodic table. <coughs> mm. Is it essential element for life on Earth? Our answer is B, nitrogen. It makes about 78% of the atmosphere and is a key component of proteins and DNA, the building blocks of life. <laughs> All right, question number two, let's go. What gas do humans need to live? Is that A, carbon dioxide, B, nitrogen, C, oxygen, or D, hydrogen? Being the gas humans need to breathe is vital for the process of cellular respiration where our cells convert glucose into energy. Our, energy, our answer is C, oxygen, and is also essential from combustion and making it crucial for fire and fueling rockets in space. Combustion. <laughs> All right, now let's move on to question number three. But first, let's have a quick message from our sponsors. My wife, Naomi, the Duchess of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, a former model and Miller Lite girl. To our amazing sponsors, you guys keep us afloat. <laughs> All 
All right, what's the hardest mineral? A, quartz, B, topaz, C, diamond, D, ruby, or E, me? The hardest mineral is not only known for its durability, but also the dazzling brilliance when it's cut and polished. For our answer, C, diamonds are often associated with engagement rings, but also used in industrial applications due to their hardness. Also, don't spend your money on diamonds. Just get moissanite. It's shinier and cheaper and almost just as hard. All right, let's move on to question number four. What does a paleontologist study? Is that A, plants, B, insects, C, softles, softles, fossils, or D, rocks? Paleontologists provide a valuable insights to the Earth's prehistoric life. Their work helps us understand the evolution of species, ancient ecosystems, and even the Earth's history. Dating back to millions of years, our answer is C, fossils. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're finally moving on to the last question for the day. In colonial, wow, colonial. <laughs> you know the word. America, what was the sugar act? Is this A, a tax on sugar? B, a tax on molasses and wine? B, a ban on sugar imports? Or D, a trade agreement with England? The Sugar Act was one of the several acts leading to the tensions that eventually uh, culminated in the American Revolution and it was seen as the way for the British government to raise revenue from the American colonies, contributing to the growing dissatisfaction that lead to the flight, fight for independence and our answer is B, a tax on molasses and wine. And that concludes today's round of Freckle Elementary, everyone. Thank you so much for being part of today's game and a huge shout out to our sponsors at La La. Addition to La La prizes in the prize pool, everyone can use Freckle 15 for 15% off of La La's merch store. But make sure you sign up for the Freckle TV account and create your user profile in the order to be eligible for these raffles and prizes. Stay tuned for the man himself floor trivia. It will return for Friday, Freckle Fridays. Hey, what's up, Freckle family? We're back, TGIFF, thank God. It's Freckle Fridays, December 8th, and I'm your Friday Trivia host, Ian Finer, AKA Lord Trivia himself. I decided to keep the food-themed quizzes going with a little fun exception. I wrote all of these questions from my own culinary knowledge. So it's you versus me on Fridays. Most of you know how this works already, but just a reminder that Freckle TV's daily trivia is the only game where you can tune in Monday through Friday, answer five questions each day, and earn raffle tickets that you can spend in our prize marketplace. Go check it out. Speaking of prizes, gotta shout out our sponsors for the week, Lala and the Wolf Wall Street film. Make sure you check out the amazing prizes from Lala in the marketplace and head to lala.xyz for more info. Again, that's lala.xyz for more info. All right, let's get the day started. Question number one. What is the primary leavening agent used in classic French baguette? Is it A, baking powder, B, baking soda, C, yeast, or D, whipped egg whites? I've been baking a lot of bread recently, so. It is a microorganism that ferments the dough, producing carbon dioxide gas, which causes the bread to rise and develop its characteristic texture. The use of sea yeast in French bread making has been a tradition for centuries, resulting in the baguette with its crisp crust and tender crumb. This time-honored method showcases the artistry of French bakers in creating one of the world's most beloved breads. I mean, who doesn't love a baguette, some olive oil, some balsam, and charcuterie? Forget it, it's amazing. Let's head to question two. In which of these dishes would you use a mirepoix? A mirepoix. Is that A, pico de gallo, B, gazpacho, C, ratatouille, or D, coco vin? The culinary term mirepoix 
refers to a mixture of diced vegetables, typically onions, carrots, and celery, used as the flavor base in various dishes. In the case of our answer, D, coque au vin, a classic French dish, mirepoix is an essential component that contributes to the rich and aromatic sauce. This combination of vegetables is often sauteed in fats and adds depth of complexity and flavor to the dish. Fun fact, other cuisines have their own version of the mirepoix. The Spanish call it a sofrito, and if you go down to New Orleans, they call it the Holy Trinity, but instead of celeries, it's bell peppers. Fun fact. Let's head to question number three, our sponsored question of the day. Check out this video from one of our sponsors. My wife, Naomi, the Duchess of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, a former model and Miller Lite girl. Big shout out to our amazing season one sponsors. Let's head to question three. What is the term for, oh shit. Shout out to our amazing sponsors. Now let's head to question number three. What is the term for the cooking method where vegetables are tossed with a small amount of fat on high heat? Is this A, blanching, B, sauteing, C, braising, or D, steaming? get this wrong, I'm gonna be steaming. It is a cooking method where vegetables are quickly tossed in a small amount of fat, like oil or butter, over high heat. Our answer, B, sauteing, allows vegetables to cook rapidly, preserving their texture, color, and flavor. It's a popular method in many culinary traditions and is known for its efficiency in both creating dishes that are flavorful and visually appealing. Question number four, what is the culinary term mise en place refer to? Is that A, the set menu, B, the plated dish, C, everything in its place, or D, a clean kitchen? It refers to the practice of preparing and organizing all the ingredients and tools needed for a particular dish before cooking. Mise en place is a fundamental concept in professional kitchens and home cooking if you're, you know, like me. Ensuring efficiency, precision, and smooth cooking processes. Chefs and cooks meticulously arrange their ingredients, cutting, measuring, and arranging them in a systemic matter, systematic manner to facilitate the seamless cooking experience. Therefore, mise en place is a French culinary term that literally translates to everything in its place. And honestly, if you don't cook that way, I'd recommend it. You'll keep your whole workspace cleaner and you'll just be happier at the end of the day. Let's head to the final question of the day, question five. What is the ratio of oil to vinegar in a classic vinaigrette? Is that one to one? Is that two to one? Three to one? Or four to one? Culinary School 101, vinaigrettes and emulsions. This balanced proportion creates a harmonious dressing with the richness of oil and the acidity of vinegar. Vinaigrettes are versatile and can be used to enhance the flavor of salads, vegetables, and more. Our answer, B, the two to one ratio, allows for customization by adding additional ingredients like herbs, mustard, honey, or shallots to create a vinaigrette with the desired flavor profile. My favorite is a mustard champagne vinaigrette. Delicious. And that concludes this week of Daily Trivia. Thank you so much for playing, and hey, make sure you sign up for for the Freckle TV account and make your profile after the game to start earning raffle tickets. The man, John Bailey, is back after the weekend for Movie Mondays. It's LT signing off for the week and have an amazing weekend.